Welcome to Curl 840 this lovely Wednesday. I am uh, Daniel Stenberg. I lead the Curl project. I've been working on Curl for a long time. I work for Wolf SSL. Today I'm going to do a uh, regular Curl presentation. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through the numbers, uh, highlight the security issues that we are. Um, publishing in, in association with this release a few of the changes or rather I'm going to talk about the changes and a bunch of the most interesting at least the most interesting to me maybe bug fixes some things to highlight talk about and something about some pending removals there's only one left and it's really boring so it's going to be quick and then just a few words maybe what might be coming up next not that much there either but you know, this is release 252, counted from the very beginning. So we've done this a few times. This time around, uh, we're doing the release earlier than anticipated. So this is just four weeks since the previous release, but we still managed to get contributions from 46 people, persons, individuals. 20 of those are new, so we're up to 2,996 in total. Of course, Closing into 3,000 is an amazing number. 21 of those contributors actually authored commits, and out of those, seven were new. So we're 1,200 commit authors in Curl so far. So running along nicely, right? So we, as I said, we're cutting this release cycle short. So it's only been 28 days since 8.3.0. So this is 8.4.0. And we're up at 9,336 days since we started this. <clears throat> We're cutting this release cycle short and we do a re, um, this 840 release. And one of the particular uh, reasons for this is the security advisories that we're announcing in, in, in association with this. And of course, highlight, uh, I wanna highlight the, uh, if you read up on these issues on NVD now or later, uh, you will of course see that they have a completely different opinion on what uh, security issues in curl. So, I highly recommend that you're using our material as a sort of the canonical resource and, and plain facts about the issues rather than uh, believing what they say about them. So <clears throat> the main reason we're doing this release early is this security vulnerability. We call it 2023-38545. Um, it is a heap buffer overflow in the SOX5 proxy handling. So yeah, we, uh, div uh, we consider it the severity high because it's a heap buffer overflow. It, you can actually get curl to override the heap buffer with quite a lot of data. Uh, since it's in the SOX5 proxy uh, code, you, ha you have to tell curl or libcurl to use the SOX5 proxy for it to be able to trigger. And you also have to sort of other, there's a combination of things that needs to happen and you need to have a host name that is longer than 255 bytes which is basically rare or even unheard of so pretty much maybe you need a malicious server that it's tricking you to use this very long host name and you also need to have a well i call in the in the advisory i call it a slow uh, sox proxy because it, you need to sort of delay the handshake a little bit so that the state machine messes up and if you do that, you can get curl to do a bad uh, copy of the host name to a buffer that then overflows the heap. If you then are a, uh, if you then are creative with a host name, you could possibly then alter heap with your own contents, or if you have control of a like the target HTTP or HTTPS server that the client is reaching. Um, yeah, that's about it. I think if you want to read, uh, we have detailed everything in, in this advisory as usual, and I have written a separate blog post exactly about how it came to be um, and everything about it. So I, if you're into details here, go read up about it. But you should know that if you're using SOX5 proxy, you should really make sure that you um, have a patched version. Uh, so, um, I'm not going to spend a lot more time about this particular flow right now because uh, there's a lot 
fine there's a lot of fine details here so you should read up about them in the advisory if you want to figure out exactly how and when it can happen we have another flaw that is actually uh, i call it this is actually much more silly because this is a cookie injection uh, flaw so and the way it happens is that when when we create a handling curl in lib curl handle for handling transfers we call them easy handles and when you happen to use cookies with one of those and then you duplicate that handle with it, our api called the dup handle it's so it's a api we provide so you can provide and get a new handle from an old handle so you get an identical twin uh, it copies the state sort of you should copy that it should use cookies but instead of sort of saving it from having a null pointer as a file name it set the file name called none that is four ascii letters right n o n e and that was just a precaution to avoid a null pointer there so did you so we could still comp the, the file name without checking for a null that is how it got into the code from the beginning but over time we have changed it so that now you can actually if you do this deplication of the handle and then later use the handle it would actually try to read cookies from that file name called none so if this sequence of uh, function calls is used by an application and you happen to have a file called none in your current directory curl would actually read that file and populate the uh, internal cookie jar with those cookies it's extremely silly and it turns out that we don't even need the file name stored there anymore so the fix is don't store the file name at all because we don't need it we might have needed it a long time ago but we could just remove it so uh, pretty much a, a, a malicious person here could then figure out a use case maybe an application that uses curl uses cookies and in and by putting a file in the proper place you could get it to sort of inject cookies into a conversation not likely and it's going to be hard and you're going to be able to sort of put a file in a place where you probably shouldn't so we consider it a severity low it's uh, uh, rewarded of course since it is a security problem i didn't mention i forgot to say about oh, that the previous one the um this uh, heap buffer overflow is a record amount of bug bounty we're rewarding since it's a severity high we reward it four thousand six hundred and sixty dollars to the founder jay satiro and in this second case the cookie injection file we reward it to this hacker under the, the pseudonym wox42 i don't know how to pronounce it <clears throat> but again they, they are of course they have reported this through our bug bounty program we verified them to be security related issues and we have fixed them in this release awesome go to the website of course to read about all the details if you're if you think i was a little bit too quick and too shallow on the details here this is 840 right curl release and that's the zero in the end means that we have done something that's not just a patch or a bug fix from the previous release that means we have added changes features something and this time around we added three things first we added a thing in the curl command line tool only it now supports the ipfs protocols you in a url so you can do ipfs colon slash slash huge hash and, and uh, blah 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 the way you do for ipfs urls so basically if you're if you're putting uh, pasting in a U ipfs url to curl it can support it but it can only support it via a http gateway so you need to tell curl where where that http gateway is the name of it uh, the entire url to the http gateway for ipfs so curl itself doesn't actually understand ipfs natively but it knows enough to sort of convert that url into language so that it can speak to an ipfs http gateway when you use an H uh, ipfs http gateway you really need to make sure that you trust that http 
gateway, right? So you shouldn't just pick a random one on the internet because who knows what that is doing. But if you're running your own IPFS node or something, you have that gateway. Or if your best friend runs one and you trust that your best friend, that you could do it that way. So this is not in libcurl. This is a thing in the curl tool only. In libcurl, however, we added a new API called curl curl multi get handles. It's very easy and straightforward, exactly what it says. It returns all the easy handles that were added previously to a multi handle. Something that has been requested several times in the past. We never really supported it. We sort of assumed and counted on the application to keep track of that themselves. Because in, in the libcurl API, you can create a, a multi handle to which you add a lot of easy handles, basically all those easy handles for the, the number of concurrent transfers you want to do. Could be one, two, three, four hundreds. <clears throat> but now you can ask curl to, hey, which handles did we add? And then it'll return a list with all of them. It, it is a convenient thing if you want for, for cleanups and, and exits paths and so on. So yeah, I think it's, it's a good thing. We also, uh, deleted support, dropped support for the legacy MingW toolchain. That's the original one, version one. I think it's uh, very old by now. No one new, no news users have sort of enabled this for a long time. We pretty much just kept it around because we had it there and, and we had CI jobs using it and so on. But by removing the support, we're cleaning up the code a little bit. We're simplifying things for ourselves. I, I don't think anyone will really notice this or be sort of harmed by it because the modern MingW ways are of course still supported and have been around for a long time already. So <clears throat> if you haven't been living under a rock for the last uh, decade, uh, this won't affect you. <clears throat> so those were the two security problems, the three changes that we're introducing. And we're also landing a 136 bug fixes, which I think is an amazing number in 28 days. So that's a lot of bug fixes every day that we have merged during these uh, poor four weeks. So how, how can you do that? Well, it, of course, bug fixes are small and big, right? They could be type of fixes in the docs. They can be a lot of polish in test cases and a lot of polish in build scripts and stuff, right? So there's small things, there's big things. Most of those bugs, of course, uh, you never saw, knew about, thought about, and you they never affected you, but we still fixed them because they sort of affected and uh, someone and, and someone noticed and we fixed it. So I want to highlight a few of those that we fixed, not 136, I think I have 14 of them here just randomly picked from the list because I felt maybe these are worthy of, of talking about. Uh, so first, we have made the CMake build a lot more aligned with the configure build. We have, um, we've worked on polishing the CMake build uh, for several releases now, but and in this release, again, we're sort of polishing it, making it more, more and better feature parity with the configure script basically and this time around we in particular we worked on making sure that the config is is not identical but very similar so when either build gets a very similar uh, when you set up the config with cmake or set it up with configure the build you get after that is very the, the builds are very similar to each other <clears throat> not identical because it depends on a details too, but almost identical. And that's the plan that we want to keep. So, so that the users can pick either or without sort of it resulting in any particular difference in the outcome, in the build results. We found a tiny little thing. So actually, so basically when curl is told to connect to a host name and that host name has multiple IP addresses, uh, for example, three, curl will, of course, iterate through those IP addresses when it tries to connect to that host. First IP1, then IP2, then IP3, if those two fail, right? And it turns out that we actually had a slight delay when we would retry the next IP, just out of a bug, just a 
So it could just sit there and wait without actually trying the next IP immediately. It would just sleep there for a few hundred milliseconds. Totally useless, uh, <laughs> and it, uh, um, of course, a bug. Now it doesn't. Now it tries the next one immediately like it was supposed to do. So in some edge cases, it will connect to hosts a little bit faster. And as I mentioned, the bug fix for the, uh, for the cookie injection bug, we removed a bunch of uh, cookie struct fields. So uh, the file name I mentioned, and I also discovered a few other things that we stored per cookie in memory when we store cookies. And by removing those struct fields, we just, yeah, we use waste a lot less memory when we use cookies with curl, which is good for those use cases when you have a lot of cookies. And I know that there are those use cases. So way less memory, uh, wasted spent on cookies now i went through a lot i basically touched updated every single curl command uh, man page not command uh, the man pages for libcurl options libcurl functions uh, and everything and updated the the references the the references in in plain text and in the see also references uh that was a uh, not a fun job it took me hours to do it and uh, yeah there's there's almost 500 man pages i think a little bit less uh, but now we also make sure that this this format is correct and we i now have test cases that verify all the references that make sure that they actually work and that they are you know correctly spelled correctly formatted so uh, in general that just improves the documentation right and in particular the documentation on the website when you want to follow links and click on host uh, function names and option names and so on. <clears throat> I also found a mistake and, and we fixed it. So in, in our previous release, we did a security fix when we told curl to not, um, you know, to limit the amount of HTTP headers that it would accept when reading a response. <laughs> and it turned out that I did the fix wrong. I used the wrong counter. So the, I would, it would, uh, stop the responses too early because it is used the accumulated counter and not the per request counter. Ah, silly, uh, because I had tests for it, but I didn't quite do it right. Anyway, anyway, fixed now. Now it uses the right uh, counter, so now the check should be better. Moving on, as you can see, we have we had a fun four weeks. Uh, the AWS Sig V4 authentication is a it's a horrible system, it's, uh, uh, but we fixed it a little bit better now. Uh, it's a it's a complete mess as uh, for a method. So it's, you know, we're going to keep polishing this forever, I guess. But now we made it a little bit better than before. In particular, if you had empty parts in the query string in a URL, because yes, you have to involve that in sort of calculating hashes and checksums that are included in the method. <clears throat> We made sure that we have this option in libcurl that is actually also used by curl the command line tool that says never transfer files bigger than this. And traditionally that limit has only been checked ahead of the transfers before it starts. So basically said don't start a transfer if you know that its file is, is bigger than this. Um, but in, in many cases when curl makes transfers, it doesn't really know how big the f file is going to be, how big the transfer is going to become ahead of time. It'll just, you know, start the transfer now. It doesn't know how big it is and it'll just eventually down the line end up very big. Uh, but this option didn't catch that because of reasons. Starting now it does. I think we have sort of the room to do that and, and not break existing functionality because of that anyway. So now it will actually, if you say, I don't want to transfer anything bigger than four gigabytes, it will actually stop the transfer if it goes up to four gigabytes during the transfer. Pretty much that sort of just a safety hatch for you. If you want to download something, you want to make sure this really should never get larger than 10 gigabytes because it'll fill up my disk. Then you can set max 10 gigabytes never transfer more so i think it's a good thing it, it'll help people avoiding uh, things and uh, also avoiding uh, having to you know do these things with other 
custom ways of, of doing the same precaution. This weirdo description, use wrapper for curl mine data FC callback, is actually from, it actually comes from the git com, from commit. So uh, I, I brought it in because it's an interesting thing. Uh, uh, the description is really bad, uh, but, but it's, we fixed a problem on ARM 32-bit builds, not x86 32-bit, but on ARM 32-bit, when using the old legacy uh, multi-part form post API in curl. Yes, we have a legacy one. It's an API that we deprecated, I think, four or five years ago. So you shouldn't use the old one. The old one is called curl underscore form add. That's the function you add parts to a multi-part form post. You shouldn't use it because it's old and deprecated. But anyway, if you would still use it, if maybe you had an application from the past, uh, uh, then if you use that, uh, and in that API, you can basically, when you're doing a multi-part form post, it's just a form post, right? It's sending a lot of data in an HTTP request to to a server and if that server redirects curl to another hey it says no 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 you should resend your uh, form post to that other site uh, or to that other url anyway could be the same site but another path then curl needs to re rewind that form post and send it again from the beginning and that rewind uses a potentially a function a callback and that callback was wrong a long explanation but anyway that callback uses uh, this is the wrong prototype so for a 32-bit arm it was wrong it's you should read up that uh, in that pull request and bug if you want to figure out the actual details it's about populating the right registers with the right values when you call fseek or not very fun um, <clears throat> We fixed the libssh backend for SFTP uploads. So we have a few different SSH backends. So you can do SSH with curl if you build with libssh or libssh2 or wolf ssh, three different SSH libraries. One of those, the libssh library, has a what I claim is a bug that if you if you Tell it, just tell it, hey, I want to send these 100K data to your server. It would just transparently send 100K in an SFTP packet, but SFTP has a limit in how big packets it allows. So apparently on some servers, this will cause problems because uh, it, the, those servers don't support that big packets. So now we limit the, the size and, we can send with SFTP when we use libssh. This is going to hamper transfer speed quite a lot. So if you're doing uploads with uh, libssh, they're probably much slower now because of this. There are ways to fix this in a much better way. And I've sort of tried to say that to the libssh project because I think they should fix it nicer, better, so that we can send how big we want to them and they manage it on their own, we have uh, we have polished and improved the boundary, the random boundary separated back to the multi-part form post. When you do a multi-part form post, you send a series of parts over HTTP. You can actually also send multi-part emails, but in those parts, they are separated by a MIME boundary, and that MIME boundary is generated by a random inserting a random string of crap. Uh, letters and previously we only used the hexadecimal thing now we use a alphanumeric string so we've increased the number of, of random bits from i think from 64 up to 130 something so basically reducing the risk that anyone would ever collide that because that's random string it has to be unique within the content it, you can't collide with it maybe 64 bits go to 130 i don't know it is better now, less uh, less of a risk to actually ever collide. If it actually was a risk before, I don't know. But it, it was a very cheap change to do, and I think it was the, good, the right thing. <clears throat> so those were 10 fun bugs, but let's, uh, let's uh, run through a few more. 
now starting now we can when you do quick connections that is hp3 you can now set uh, you know the ciphers and the curves exactly that you could and for tls 1.3 with for regular tls so now you can do it for the quick connections as well assuming that you want to fiddle with it you rarely do actually but now you can we fixed the problem is actually a regression uh, that happens when uh, um so HTTP2 and HTTP3, for that matter, they have this concept called go away. It's, uh, it's a way for a server to say, uh, don't create new streams on this connection anymore. You can sort of finish the ones that are already there, but don't create any new, any new ones. So you can have a connection with 100 streams, but when you want to add the, a new stream, it says go away. So leave those 100 for, the, for that connection and then curl needs to create a new connection to do the new stream on right and the, the new ones coming up later they should also then all use that new connection and not the old one because the old one is now on go away that's usually for example servers doing a graceful restart sort of you know let the old connection die create new ones for the new ones uh, and we had a mistake there that made curl uh, fail instead of you know graciously just create that new connection and do new streams on that <clears throat> we did this little change so when you do, when you use websocket which and, and again websocket is a experimental feature still in curl so you still had to uh, enable it explicitly you know deliberately opt in when you build curl uh, so uh, uh, now we're it would not check the http and hps proxy environment variables for which proxy to use it would only use the ws and wss proxy variables so now if the ws and wss proxies are not set well the one for the for that particular uri scheme you're using it will fall back and check the http and hps proxy variables secondary and if they are not set it would it will check the all proxy variable blah 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 um just a tiny little thing and again websocket is not enabled by default yet I, I i did a silly thing so um we added support for the variables concept in 830 so you can set uh, variables and you can expand variables in the command line options with the dash dash expand prefix um I did a whole separate video on that you should really if you're not if you don't know what i'm talking about you should check out that video for for explaining explainer on, on what it is and how it works but anyway if you set those variables and you can import environment variables etc and if you're trying to expand those on a command line argument that is set to handle file names like dash dash output it wouldn't work because of a silly bug it only worked for more data oriented options like dash dash data and uh, a lot of the others anyway fixed now so now it works for a dash dash output as well as it was supposed to from the beginning so those were our i would say maybe 14 funnest bug fixes of course it's a subjective thing you should go uh, and, and check the full change log to figure out which your favorites are and now with this release since we removed the legacy that ming w support in this release we only have one particular thing still targeted for a pending removal and that is as you can see july 2024 when we will remove support for space separated patterns in the no proxy variable this is a I have mentioned this many times before and will mention this many times again as you can see before this happens so hopefully it will not be a surprise by the day we do it and this is a way to unify handling of the no proxy patterns more in and, and align it with other tools and libraries so that sort of maybe eventually down the road the no proxy patterns and, and series of patterns will be more similar uh, among tools uh, yeah it's a blue sky dream so maybe maybe uh, it won't happen but yeah I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to do our little part at least so no, we have a vision so there is a future 
we do the release today, October 11. There's going to be another release, hopefully in eight weeks this time, hopefully no short release cycle. So it's going to call it most likely, I would say 8500 because we have changes we want to do. And we actually don't have that many changes this time. We have a few. And in particular, we have this uh, ongoing discussion how to allow dot onion host names or not maybe maybe not so if you have a, a, an opinion or rather i know there's a lot of opinions if you have a more concrete proposal on exactly how we should do this allow not allow then uh, come on in and, and let us know <clears throat> and then i also have this uh, i have this second feature mentioned called decode remote name it is um, it is a proposed PR to decode the remote name part of a URL when we're saving it. You know, if you're, if you're using a URL like example.com slash percent 20, percent 20, percent 20, percent 20, percent 20 is then a URL encoded space. So maybe if you had this option and you would save it, it would then save it as, you know, decoded ASCII characters instead. It's a bit tricky since it, we don't know the character encoding and it's possibly or mostly UTF-8, but not necessarily. Not all operating systems are using UTF-8. Uh, so it's it's a little bit of a challenge. I saw the author of this also just closed his original PR and he mentioned that he will come back with a more simplified version. So I guess we will just have to see what happens on this. But I know I know that people are still want to see this pretty much because um, it's a bit annoying that it saves file names with all those percent encoded characters when you mostly don't care about percent encoding when you save a file name so we'll see two simple things i'm pretty sure there will be other things showing up there's this fun ech pr going on encrypted client hello that i'm certainly keeping my eye on and i'm going to help review more I just don't think it might not be ready exactly for this particular release just yet. Maybe, maybe it should have been mentioned there, ECH, and it's a fun feature. The browsers are apparently supporting it now, both Firefox and Chrome at least. So it's certainly a pending thing. It's a way to encrypt the SNI field in TLS. You know, the only clear text field left pretty much, which includes the host name that you're going to talk to. So. With TLS, you pretty much leak to, a, to an observer who you are going to talk to. With ECH, that's a way to avoid that leakage. Uh, we are talking about 8.5.0 on December 6, 2023, if things go as planned. And well, let's cross our fingers and, and hope that this is going to be what happens, right? Um, and always, this is the URL for the pending, coming, upcoming release notes. The things we've merged since the previous release. Well, it's right now, I bet it's incorrect, but it's going to be the right one uh, going forward. It's populated automatically uh, as we sync things. Uh, and we have this, as I, as I imagine that you know, we have an eight week release cycle. This week, the eight weeks, of course, became four weeks but uh you know <laughs> the, the idea is that we should we should keep it uh, uh eight weeks and we have this concept where uh, we do this release on wednesdays we release wednesdays always release on wednesdays even actually in this time time when we cut it short i, I decided to do it on a wednesday and after the wednesday we cool down in 10 days basically verify that everything is fine if we need to, we can do a follow-up pat follow patch release. If there's anything really bad, if there's a horrible regression, people are screaming, the sky is falling, uh, then we do a patch release. Maybe we don't adjust the cycle otherwise. But if nothing happens within those, I mean, nothing, no badness, uh, we only merge regular bug fixes. And so if there's no major thing, we open the feature freeze Saturday 10 days later we have a feature window for 21 days that's three full weeks then it's a Saturday again and then we close the feature window and we have a feature freeze for 25 days until 
release Wednesday. So that's this is the sort of the ongoing ongoing cycle of life, or at least cycle of curl releases. Uh, and of course, in this particular day, today is October 11. So the next, you know, when we open the feature window, it's going to be October 21. Three weeks after that is going to be November 11, and then of course the next then the next release Wednesday is going to be December 6. Ideally, hopefully, then the last release of 2023. We have had more releases in 2023 than we have had in uh, several years, actually, in many years. I think it's the most release-filled year, uh, well, in a decade or more, uh, because of reasons. But let's ignore that for now. So we, I do curl support, commercial curl support. If you need curl support for your companies, your products, your day-to-day -day life, get in touch and we can help you fix things already this afternoon if you just um, get it going. And if you have any bugs, if you find any problems anywhere in curl, uh, go here to github.com slash curl curl, uh, well, slash issues for particular for each, um, bug reports actually. And if you have or see no suspect security problem in curl, you go to this hacker1.curl URL and you submit it there. Um, the ones we talked about today, they were submitted there. They uh, are given monetary awards or rewards, of course, for, for finding and reporting security problems. You can get that as well if you report security problems. And we keep them uh, undisclosed and under wraps hidden until we have everything fixed, right? So we can do do it like I do today. Announce it associated with the release, all the fixes, all the details, all the patches uh, at the same time. That's the way we want to do it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, these are, of course, the fun and good and uh, the good friends of ours, the official curl sponsors this month for curl. I say this month for because. Uh, we have, uh, there's some kind of uh, minor rotation sometimes among, among the sponsors. So some come, some go. But uh, thanks to these great sponsors, we can do curl the way we do it. Totally independent and uh, with a focus. So this is curl. This is all I wanted to say about curl 8.4.0. Um, have fun, enjoy, and I will see you again uh, in another release. Bye.